Hey everyone, it's me, Narada, African Hair Guide. Today we will be doing a video showing me retwisting my sister's hair, but in this video we're also going to demonstrate how I refresh her hair color using semi-permanent hair color by Adore. Now I wanted you all to take a look at her hair and her locks. It is definitely time for her retwist. It's been about four weeks and this is what her color looks like here. We refresh her color maybe every four months or so. Um, not too, too often. Um, as you can see, it fades very nicely. It doesn't look too, too bad. Um, it gives this very uh, reddish, copper, rustic color. But that's not really what we were going for. But, you know, if she, she can stretch her color refreshes out quite a few months. So is cool um we retwist her hair about every four to five weeks and um she washes her hair um, once in between retwists and during her retwist so that would be about twice a month um you can see her hair in great detail here um and even now with her needing a retwist it still looks pretty good so the color that we chose to use today are intense red and crimson we are using that in a 50 50 uh mixture we only needed four bottles instead of six i got six just in case it's always better to have too much color than not enough and with locks you want to make sure that you have very very uh much saturation when you are applying hair color all right so um Usually when I apply color, um, semi-permanent, um, according to the manufacturer's instructions, I apply it to pre-shampooed hair. However, Henny was here and she told me, uh, just go and wet her hair um, and get it damp and then apply the color to that and then shampoo after you let the color process. And I was like, girl, are you sure? Like, that is not what the instructions say. But she was like, yes, I've been doing a door for quite some time. Trust me. And I was like, okay, cool. I, we, we just going to go with it. But you guys all will see the results. So I went ahead and mixed the color. And we are just going and applying. You can see I sectioned off her hair into five sections. We are starting from the back and working our way up to the front. That is just the easiest way to do this. Um, and I am using a brush to apply the color. I'm not only working the color on the lightened portions of her hair, but I am also working it up to the roots and trying to get as much coverage from the roots, mid strands, and the ends of her locks. Now, when you are applying hair color or lightener to locks, it is important to have very um, heavy saturation because uh, you are talking about applying um, color or lightener to clumps of hair that are compacted full of a bunch of strands and if you don't have enough product to really coat and saturate all of those strands you end up with a patchy um outcome with your locks so i definitely want to make sure i had enough color and i'm really really working it and packing it in there i'm taking my time during this process there's no need to rush with semi-permanent you can take as much time as you need to um and like I said, I am working it up to the roots. Um, the last time I did her color refresh, I avoided you working it up to the roots because I didn't want to stain her her skin and her scalp. And I didn't like the outcome of that because you could see where the semi-permanent color started and where her natural color was left virgin and untouched. And it just did not look cohesive to me. Other people wouldn't have noticed it, but I noticed it as, you know, a hairstylist now. I am licensed to do hair color and stuff like that. Um, I do not do hair color at my salon. I, ha I make exceptions for a couple of my clients. Aaliyah is one of them, but no, don't. I'm not doing your hair color. I, I don't. I just dabble in it every now and again. Um, don't ask me for highlights. I ain't doing your your balayage. I ain't doing all of that. Okay. I I actually don't like to do hair color. I don't like to work with chemicals. I literally just like doing natural hair. Like that is my preference and that's what I like to do and I'm great at it and I'm okay with that. Like I don't need to do everything. Um, but yeah, you will also see um, her alopecia at the top. Yes, she has a bald spot. We say this on every video. People be freaking out. Is that a bald spot? It, yes, 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 yes it is. It is. 
it is um she has alopecia areata she's had it um as long as i can remember it just hasn't been that big um she always had uh like a little bald spot at the top of her head but it was like the size of um the size of a eraser on a pencil it wasn't really big at all um over the years i saw it progress and i urged her when i was doing her hair years ago i urged her to go and seek um medical advice um and to get the advice of a dermatologist or a trichologist um she just always fought me every step of the way so at some point i just stopped pressuring her to go and see what was going on with her hair to see if there was any options to you know kind of remedy or keep it from getting worse and um it is what it is <laughs> like at this point they that hair there is not never coming back the skin has definitely scarred over the skin is smooth there's no place for the hair to penetrate so even if you could get the follicles to become active again the hair would never come out of that um which is okay um we held off on starting her locks for quite a few years because we were always concerned that her alopecia could progressively get worse and it could cause a lot of issues with her locks um including thinning breakage losing locks and things like that she's currently um two plus years in um going on three and like her hair and her alopecia um hasn't gotten any worse it hasn't progressed she doesn't have any thinning she hasn't had any breakage around her locks in that area like it's it's been going great so we definitely could have done this a lot sooner um i noticed it seemed like her alopecia seemed to progress when she would go to other people i don't know what they were doing um when she was away at college or you know what the case was but i always try to handle her um that area very uh gently and meticulously because i don't want to cause any extra trauma to that that area that could you know cause any more issues but um ever since she's been coming to me consistently we haven't had any issues with it so that's great oh oh i should be talking about the hair color right all right so uh again just packing in and working that color in on the top on the bottom working through the roots mid strands ends and once i get a good amount of um, application with the color I will go in and squeeze the color into the strands and into the interior of the locks using my hands. Um, anyone who has done hair color with locks, you know that just, you know, dabbing on hair color with the brush is cute, but at some point you do need to go in and get, you know, put some elbow grease in it, you know, get your hands dirty and really use your hands to really work in that color into the locks because sometimes you can't just trust the brush to just get it in there like you you really any hair colorist knows that you have to use both your brush as a tool and also your hands so we are going here in the front i just wanted y'all to see um, the application here it's pretty much the same um you will also see me apply it to her her uh fine hairs in the front she's always had um Thin edges due to what I believe to be um, relaxer damage from improper relaxers. Um, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Okay, I wasn't doing hair back then. But um, it is what it is. Um, at first, I was like, should I should I touch up that part of her hair? Because I didn't want to stain her scalp. Like, I really was trying hard to not get the color on her scalp. But it's kind of impossible. That's why I have her holding her ear with the towel. Because I'm like, I don't want to get color all over your ear and then your ear looks bloody and like you got to go somewhere today and i don't want you looking crazy somehow some way the color got where it didn't need to go <laughs> but i did end up going in and just feathering in the uh color to her um hairline and the thin parts in the front and it did it did get on her forehead it did get on her cheek it got everywhere like listen i know my my color application is not the best okay it does get a little messy but um the end result definitely justifies the means um and it didn't stain her skin too bad we got the color off um during the shampooing process which now that i think about it 
Usually when you do a door or semi-permanent, you have to do it on pre-shampooed hair. So the fact that I went in after applying the color and shampooed really, really helped with getting that color off that we probably typically wouldn't be able to had we shampooed prior. So um, there we go. We got the color all in. Now I am applying this processing cap to keep the color moist to keep the keep it from drying out and also helping to trap the heat into her hair to help it process better. So be permanent um, does not penetrate into the cortex. It sits on the cuticle layers of the hair. So you want to do whatever you can to get those cuticles to lift and open as much as possible to allow as much color to reside in that cuticle layer. So she is going to sit under the dryer and I had her process for about 40 minutes or so. All right. So at this point, we are about to rinse out the color and proceed to shampoo. This process took about 15 minutes. Um, a lot of rinsing, a lot of rinsing. I don't know if that's because I really just packed this color in there, but baby, it was hard getting this color out. Um, we ended up doing two lathers. Um, looking back on it, maybe I should have did a third one, but I thought it was kind of counterproductive to even do two because with semi-permanence, you really aren't even supposed to shampoo um after the color you're supposed to apply the color on shampooed hair so um yeah but honestly i think it just would have been in her best interest to do a third shampoo and i also didn't focus the shampoo or the lather really on the ends of her locks either so i don't know if that contributed to um the excessive bleeding that she experienced when she washed her hair yesterday um, she's had her color for about a week. She's been rocking in her twist for a week, and she just uh, washed her hair yesterday. She was like, oh, my God, it was like a murder scene in my bathtub. It was so much bleeding, da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, well, you know, semi-permanent, that's what it does. And, you know, we were going to go the route of doing permanent um, hair color so she wouldn't have to deal with all the extra bleeding and whatnot. But I opted against it because... Um, I just knew that permanent hair color um, over time could lead to overprocessing, um, would thin out and damage her strands, compromise her hair, her locks. So I didn't want to do that. So um, I decided we're just going to stick with the semi-permanent and just deal with the bleeding. Now, um, I've tried just about everything possible to minimize the bleeding. I've tried using cold water. I've tried using conditioner. I've tried using apple cider vinegar i've tried soaking the hair in apple cider vinegar nothing works okay so don't even bother with the suggestions nothing works it's going to bleed that's just how semi-permanents are made that is how they are designed and at this point i am just i'm okay with that you know if you don't want bleeding don't get semi-permanent it's as simple as that so um i believe we are on is this the first? No, no, no. Is this the second lather? I'm not sure which one. No, maybe this is the first. Look, look. Okay, we we washing the hair. We washing it. We get up in that scalp. We squeezing that shampoo in. This must be the second. I don't. I don't know. I've been running my mouth the whole time. Now listen. Um, y'all know I don't really use conditioner on on my lock clients too much. So she didn't get a, condi a conditioner rinse. Um, she just got two lathers. We rinsed it out and I took it to the chair and I did her retwist. Now, I am gonna showcase uh, me doing her retwist, but I'm gonna speed up the video. You guys have seen me do retwists so much, so often recently. And um, I just thought it would be really redundant for me to like show that in real time. Cause y'all don't need to see it. Y'all have seen me do it plenty of times. Um, I used the Bronner Brothers hair grease on her hair because I know um, she needs something a little bit heavier because she goes a longer period of time um, with shampooing her hair. Um, her hair dries out really easily, so that's why I opted to use that instead of the Nature's Blessings. Um, so yeah, here we finished with the shampoo, trying to squeeze out the excess water. And I tried to take her up from the shampoo bowl and I locked, looked at the back of her neck and I was like, ooh, all that color is sitting back there. Let me dab this up. Let me do another uh, good little rinse back here just to make sure 
we get what needs to go we is not going to just be like oh she won't she won't see it in the back no no take her back to the bowl do what you need to do um but it was just like the color residue on her skin so i just wiped it up gave it another good rinse and she's good to go so yeah at this point we are back in the chair and i'm about to go ahead and put in this work but i just wanted y'all to see her hair um, after I pulled it out of the towel, um, I like to do my retwist on wet hair and uh, with water and hair grease and that's it. Y'all know how this goes. Y'all know how this goes. So you can't see it just yet, but you will see um, after I finish this retwist, you will see the end results of the retwist and the color. I'll let you see the before and after. I'm going to let the music play um, while this retwist uh, clip plays out and that'll be the end of this video so if you have any comments questions or concerns leave it in the comment section below thank you so much for watching and supporting um i know some of these videos get a little redundant and i wish i could showcase more but you know i'm very limited right now with what i can do because of these gloves because of my situation so i just appreciate y'all for just taking the time and watch and i hope that with each and every video no matter how redundant it is you learn and take away something all right be blessed everybody i'll see you on the next one